we're going to have a few small speeches, you know, nothing later than till 9 o'clock and then go eat. <laughs> um, as you know, it is Corrid's uh, 20th anniversary. Uh, we invited some of the, uh, of the commissioners of the original Commission on Health Research for Development to come. Um, we are very happy um, with one being here in person and the other being represented uh, by uh, Jimmy Montoya. And so we have only two brief contributions about the history of the Commission and what came from Corred um, as part of the celebration just now and then after this time just about where we might take it into the future. And that's all the formalities that you'll get. Like a great homogenous group producing a book that leads to the Global Forum for Health Research, uh, to Corred, to all kinds of other things. Um, actually it was very uh, split in its opinion between you know, the high quality research being done in the north and the application of it done in the south versus the seven members of the organization uh, who really opposed that. And that was until the last, I understand, a, a major issue in the report. Well, to my surprise, about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, there was an article by a German uh, a PhD student in health policy or in economics that criticized um, ERV for um, do having some of its research done in, in low-income countries because of its inefficiency to do it there as opposed to doing it in the US or in Europe. And so that same argument is still playing now. And clearly the, the very reason that we want to move beyond that over the last 20 years is to say it's not just the product, not just the knowledge, not just the drug that it has produced. It is the business around the research that is so crucial. Um, and again, I think much of the evidence comes from the US, where hundreds of thousands of jobs in global health are dependent on that global health. In fact, uh, talking to Mary and also to others, much of the lobbying at Congress to keep global health uncut in spite of all the deficiencies and deficits and budgets, is around its potential for job creation and startup company creation in the US. And so the question is, in global health research, surely it is not only the products that should flow south, but also all the rest of the business that comes with research should flow south. And that has been part, if you want, of Corred's view on research and innovation for health equity and development. It is that development arm which is as important um, as you want, as the direct impact on disease or the products that we engineer. I'm arguing that. <clears throat> now, at the same time, this week, as you probably also know, is that the BRICS countries have a meeting in Durban in South Africa. And they're talking one step further, and that step further is they're going to set up their own development bank. Um, and it is already far advanced in its planning. And the reason to set up our development bank is not to compete in magnitude at this time with the World Bank, but is to be able to start funding according to your own priorities and your own systems. And so the assertiveness, if you want, the, the, the development um, of where um, middle income countries are going is changing so rapidly, you can't keep up with it. Um, we think that if Corent now looking forward 10 years, 20 years, if we operate on research systems, not on a project now that needs to happen in a low income country, but if you think 10, 15, 20 years ahead, we think about the whole of Africa being almost middle income country with lots of expertise, lots of capable people, lots of institutions that can legitimately start taking the initiative um, with funding from their own development bank. Um, in, uh, in defining global health and health research agenda. And so it is no longer, if you want, uh, just what, what is given, what is motivated, what is looking, it will be driven out of the south and much quicker than you think, I think. Um, those of you who have been following The Economist, uh, uh, if you're following The Economist, 11 years ago, there was a big title on the front cover which says, Africa, the homeless continent. Uh, ten years later, it is Africa rising, and I think just about every month it has a new front cover. It can't keep up with trying to show the economic potential of, of uh, Africa. And then it gets criticized that this is mostly raw material export. You know. But in fact, if you look at the capitals, if you look at the capabilities, the skylines are changing. Um, the, the middle class is growing. The African Development Bank predicts 
that there is uh, uh, in 20 years' time, there's between 40, I think 45 percent will be middle class demanding consumers. Um, and so, if Korea looks at itself forward, we don't necessarily see ourselves anymore as a lobbying organization that has to promote to close this 1090 gap. And that's why we feel that the 1090 gap maybe is a concept that has had its time. Um, we will, in fact, be at the entirely other side. How can we bring together those countries, those institutions that want to move into science and technology into connection with other people uh, that are already doing it? How can we spread this information? How can we make those I don't know who said it, South, South, North, South, and North, South, South um, relations. How can we make the connections uh, for research? And, and I think the final issue, the issue that came on for equity, um, it is always a, a difficult one. Too many people um, realize in some countries where I worked with Hassan, the word equity is almost like a revolutionary term. You're, you're a radical NGO if you mention the word equity. Um, but equity literally means um, that the research, the common good that we do with research would become available to, to all. That ultimately is not just available to some. Now, debt equity is often forgotten. It's a drive for economic development, so that many of the middle income countries are quite willing to pursue science, technology and development, including in health, uh, to become great producers, to take parts of the market. But the equity in their own countries, as you know, is often forgotten. And I think that might be yet another role where I think Korea's focus on research and innovation for health, equity, and development will take a place. So, what that would exactly mean, I don't know. We're going to have a new board. Um, they're already putting the fire on my feet to help redefine what it is that we're going to do. Um, I'm really looking forward um, to 20 years of um, maybe not a commission, but at least as much debate that would lead to a productive solution forward. And I thank you all of it for joining that occasion with us and very much to everyone's collaboration over the next 10, 20 years to, to help us also see where it is that as an organization we need to go. So enjoy the meal. That's all I have to say and I'm not going to say it. <laughs>